Welcome on in everybody. Thanks for joining. And I just had to put a special uh, video out about Saturn moving into Aquarius because, well, how could I not? I'm an Aquarian, right? I got <laughs> three Aquarius placements. This is really big news. Um, but yeah, not just for the Aquarians, everybody. Yeah, we got a major shift coming up and I'm filming this on December 14th, 2020. We're in the thick of a lot of astrological activity and I'm going to talk about that here. Um, and so if you want to stick with me, it's going to be quite a chat. You know, look, I've got, I've got my iced tea. I'm about to pour me some herbal tea. Uh, go get you a drink or whatever makes you happy. And let's sit down and talk about this because we've got a lot to cover. We're going to talk about, you know, what this major two and a half year transit means astrologically, you know, for us collectively over the next couple of years. And then how these energies are going to, you know, really affect us, even on an individual level, which I'll cover more the individual stuff at the end where I'm going to go by sign. Um, but I do have to say up front, there's a lot of people already doing that out there. And, you know, I'll drop names throughout. Like if you want to know more about the astrology or you want to know more about your individual astrology, okay, I will drop names as I go. Um, but I am going to put a lot of this video, um, you know, a lot of my effort in this video is going to be put into uh, talking about how this shift is really affecting us at large. And yeah, to kick that off, we're going to cover a little bit of background on the last Saturn transits, which I think will help maybe warm you up to, aha, we've kind of been through this before, but Saturn and Capricorn, Sagittarius and so on, and get you to reflect on how that affected you before, because, you know, it's not to scare anybody, right? Um, it is meaningful. It's very meaningful. It's very powerful. Uh, but we're always dealing with Saturn in a particular house of our natal charts. Um, Saturn is always in a sign. So uh, we'll cover a little bit of the background. And um, and then I want to share with you, this is what's really hopefully going to make this video a bit different from what's already out there, is I want to share with you my personal experience with these energies being an Aquarius. Three Aquarius placements I have, you know, Sun in Aquarius, uh, Mercury and Midheaven in Aquarius. And um, I've got some experience with this Saturnian Capricorn energy that we've been in over the last two and a half years, having, you know, two parents who are Capricorns. I've got my Mars in Capricorn. So I'm going to kind of share with you my take, which I think is a unique one because I've been watching a lot of people who don't come from that energetic signature or that background that I mentioned. And so sometimes, you know, they say things that I'm like, mm, I don't know about that. That's not the way Aquarius sees it. And Aquarius is a very, probably the most misunderstood sign of the zodiac. So Aquarius here is going to try to set the record straight. And I'm going to give some predictions. And then finally, at the end, I'll go quickly, very generally, sign by sign. And I'll refer you to some other people uh, that you might want to check out if you want to go even deeper than that. So thanks for joining me and let's get into it. All right, so, you know, I hope you got something to drink and I'm getting my hot tea ready. And, um, you know, let's just do a basic overview for those of you who are not familiar with, um, you know, Saturn transits. They occur roughly every two and a half years. They go through the different signs. Okay, we just, we're coming out of Saturn and Capricorn. We're moving into Saturn and Aquarius. And it will take roughly 28 to 29 years for Saturn to move throughout all 12 signs. And usually when it does that in your natal chart, when it completes that 12th um, house, okay, then you've completed a major 28, 29 year cycle. So big stuff. And like I said earlier, I'm filming this on the 14th of December, which is, you know, <laughs> we've got the new moon solar eclipse um, occurring today. And then in a couple days um, on the 17th, which will be a Thursday, uh, then, you know, Saturn's going to enter Aquarius where it will remain until March 7th of 2023. 
And so basic overview of this energy is that Saturn is went into Aquarius earlier this year in 2020. Think about it. What were you doing um, in March of 2020? Well, um, let me guess. You were experiencing the first COVID lockdowns, right? I think that we all were. And this really brought in a change of relationship with others and with how we... Um, you know, engage with an online community. These are very Aquarian things, you know, uh, other focused and, you know, the internet, very Aquarian things. We saw a lot of people getting onto Zoom to go to school or go to work. Um, and what we also saw during this time was a lot of um, big tech um, suppression. And um, that was something that I think uh, came to a shocker for, you know, it was a shocker for many people. And, um, you know, Aquarius is co-ruled by Uranus, so you can get a lot of shocks and awes <laughs> with that energy. And that really brought it in. I think as we saw um, toward the end of 2020, we started seeing the congressional hearings um, on, you know, uh, Jack Dorsey of uh, Twitter and Mark Zuckerberg of Facebook. And we even saw a, a little bit of a probe into the goings on at Google, Google suppression, and even began seeing, I don't know if you noticed, but um, all the little people's voices were being drowned out by, you know, big media um, being featured on the first page of search results. And so, and a lot of warnings about what official uh, officials claim is the, the correct story. Um, and, you know, and, and a lot of fear rising up in people about uh, being censored, being deplatformed, being demonetized, being blacklisted, shadow banned, so on and so forth. There were a lot of people this year that were taken down um, and, and endured that. So that just really um, validated the fears, unfortunately. So a lot of changes going on uh, in the online realm. And that even impacted the economy because uh, we had a lot of people who um, have online businesses. And myself as an online business owner, um, I experienced quite a shakeup. I started understanding probably... Um, by the summertime, after we were already going through the motions with the COVID lockdown, that there is a recession going on with online businesses. And what we're seeing is a lot of um, saturation of these online platforms. It's like, for example, uh, those of you who've been with me for quite a while, you know that I started my channel in 2017 and it was uh, very spiritually oriented. Um, I was doing tarot, okay? Um, and astrology. And at that time, there were maybe only, I, I guess, maybe a hundred of us that, that I was aware of. And now, fast forward to 2020, thousands upon thousands. How do business owners compete in this kind of marketplace? And that's YouTube alone. We're seeing the same thing occurring in other platforms. And then you bring it in at a time where people um, are now trying to launch online businesses like never before, not as a side hustle, but as a matter of survival, given loss of job opportunities, um, less, um, you know, employment options, okay? So um, we got a taste of this. The good news about this is that um, when Aquarius went into Saturn earlier this year, March, 2020, um, and even coming into it in December, we're looking at Aquarius in, you know, uh, the, the zero to first degree of Aquarius, okay? And so on one hand, it's a very pure, uh, unfiltered, potent energy. Um, but it also sets the tone for what to, what is to come. And my hope is that as we get further into um the degrees of Aquarian, of Aquarius, that we're going to feel less of this uh, restriction. It is my hope, and this is something I'm going to talk more about as we get deeper into this, uh, you know, this message. 
uh, but let me say as in terms of the progression, I think this year was the hardest um, hit at zero to one degrees in Aquarius because we're not yet in this place of knowing what the wholeness of truth is and rightly dividing that truth. Um, but when we get into 2021 and Aquarius moves into one to 13 degrees of the sign, then we come into a knowingness of, aha, this is what's going on here. And then you move into 20 to 20, 2022, uh, Aquarius will be in 11 to 25 degrees uh, where we're in the thick of knowingness, like it's abundantly clear what is going on. And I think by 2023, uh, with Aquarius in 22 to 30 degrees, we are then coming to terms with what's known. And by the way, there are a lot of experts, particularly people who are in the real estate markets and economy, they are predicting that what we will be coming to terms with by 2023 is um, the economic fallout. Right now, a lot of people are not feeling it. Some are saying that this is like the 2005 um, and that in 2023, it will be like 2008, where we see a foreclosure crisis um, right now. A lot of smoke and mirrors going on because of the current uh, astrology, a lot of Neptunian stuff going on this year, which brought quite a lot of delusion and deception, whether it was from the media or we're deluding ourselves, not seeing things clearly. Um, nevertheless, however you want to explain it, um, when we get into... Um, 2023 by the time we're into 2023 there's not going to be any denying anymore <laughs> what the real value of homes are and uh, how many people have gone into default and what that actually looks like um, because right now we're not yet seeing it there's a lot of paper moving around and a lot of rewriting of contracts rewording of things um, but by 2023, we will be coming to terms with what is abundantly known and made clear. Like I said, as we, uh, as Aquarius gets deeper into, um, you know, the degrees of Aquarius, um, I should say as Saturn gets deeper into the degrees of Aquarius, um, we are hopefully going to see a maturation of the energy where there's less restriction because in the earlier degrees, it's very Capricornian and leaning. And so this is another thing I wanna add that um, this year and even next year, we are still going to probably see, it, it might feel still in some way, some way, slightly, a little bit Capricornian, okay? Think about it. Think about some Aquarians that you know, the early born Aquarians who are born more in the uh, latter part of January or very early days of February. Um, sometimes these Aquarians can strike you as Capricorns. They can seem very Capricornian. They might in fact have a lot of Capricorn in their sign, uh, in their natal chart, I should say. But um, the Aquarians, like myself, who are ladder-born, third decan Aquarians, Piscean leaning, not so much. Yeah, I know on the surface I might seem very status quo Capricorn to y'all because my Mars is in Capricorn. And I do have a Taurus rising, so I present very earth sign-ish, but get to know me on the inside, I'm very unconventional. <laughs> I'm mostly uh, Aquarius and Pisces, okay? So... Anyway, I digress. The point is, is that as we shift from Saturn in Capricorn to Saturn in Aquarius, this year and even into next year, you're going to probably see some slight variation, but as Saturn progresses through Aquarius, I think we're gonna see this maturation of the Aquarian energy towards one that is more almost Piscean leaning, okay? So let's review, you know, the energy just that I wanna highlight, you know, that brings us into next year. In a nutshell, we're dealing right now, you know, December with 
as I mentioned before, on the 14th, dealing with this um, eclipse, solar eclipse. And uh, we're coming into really the hot topic for this month, which is on December 21st, the grand conjunction with Saturn conjunct Jupiter at zero degrees in Aquarius. Wow, that's going to be... Uh, probably a hot mess, okay? And we've got, you know, with these eclipses, um, that's things being eclipsed in and out of our lives, things being revealed, um, starting new cycles, major cycles with these eclipses that are going to be impacting us for at least six months to come, if not more. Major pivot points in our lives. And, you know, then we've got the nodes uh, with the... Um, North Node in Gemini, South Node in Sagittarius. So um, with that placement, we are having to release some things that maybe we believed in and we're being directed towards the truth of the matter versus, you know, what, what you want to believe in and, and the optimism and the pie in the sky and, you know, seeking after a higher truth or whatever. Um, it's, it's kind of bringing, we're being brought more down to this grounded earth of what, what is, what is the truth. Okay. And unfortunately we've got Neptune and Pisces that's been occurring, uh, this year, which is, you know, uh, Pisces is ruled by Neptune and you put, in, you put Neptune and Pisces. Oh my God, this is this, this like double, double delusion. <laughs> that people have been dealing with this year and, and Neptune is ruled by the media. So my God, I've been saying this ad nauseum to people on my channel, uh, particularly on my community page, because I have to be careful about what I put on this channel, but you know, and the people don't really know me and don't follow me. Some of them are not so open to different ideas that aren't status quo and the official narrative and all of that p politically correct. Okay. So I have to be careful, but I, I mean, I'm just telling you on an astrological note here with this Neptunian energy in Pisces, um, you know, and it's near the South node. I, what's, what we're having to do is um, really take a second look at the media messaging. Is it misleading? Are you being misled? Are you getting the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth? So help you God, you know? Um, because I think that, uh, you know, based on what I heard from Leo King, then this is, a, this is a good source for you to go. Go look at his most recent astrology reports. He goes into a lot more detail and he does a really fine job of it. I really like Leo King. Um, with the astrology, very out of the box, you know, um, thinker, which I really appreciate um, as an Aquarian, really appreciate that he's not just, you know, painting on a smile and giving you a great report and reading, you know, giving you textbook knowledge. He's telling you, like, what does this really look like in reality? Um, like it or not, you know, politically correct or not. So, um if you go watch his most recent astrological report, he will explain how these eclipses um, are impacting the South Node and really pushing us to purge out any programming we have been getting from big tech, big media. And also how Mercury is aspecting all of this with the eclipse to just purge even further the way that we think the world is versus the truth about how the world really is. Oh, and the people running it, you know, that's another thing. So a lot of um, crazy energy for lack, I hate to use the word crazy, okay, because now I feel like I'm gaslighting, but my gosh, it's it could be crazy making energy. Like you don't know at times. Um, you know, what you think is up is down and vice versa. And it's really making us question our reality and our beliefs. Um, and yeah, for some people that is crazy making because paradigms are being, sh you know, shattered, false paradigms. Uh, people start realizing that they've been lied to and that can be very hard to cope with and deal with. Some people do not, number one, uh, know how to deal with the, the concept that people they trust or that they've put into authority over them 
have betrayed them and lied to them because they're insecure. They put their security in these other people. Well, when you can't put your security in these other people or these institutions, then, then what? You know, you're really insecure then, okay? So, um, and the other issue is, you know, um, really having to then face the reality of, wow, I was, I, I let myself be deceived. Um, what, how did I let this happen? How can I make sure this doesn't happen again? Um, it, it's, it's a major, um, I, I'm hearing the veil is going to be lifted on a lot of people. And unfortunately, be careful because some people, they can't deal with it. Their way of coping with this reality check is denial. So I don't know why I'm getting, and this is really not me to say this, but I'm really f sensing like I spiritually, like I need to say go easy on some people because they are highly insecure. They do not know how to cope and you will get people during this time. I just heard they cannot be wrong. Okay. Um, they cannot be wrong. It's just too much for them. The idea that they are wrong. They can't process. They can't cope with it. So, you know, be careful about these people that are, you know, coming into 2021 with their sense of reality uh, shattered, false sense of reality, and they don't know what to believe anymore. And rather than go into this vulnerable place of exploring that, they just check out of the building and they start gaslighting people and saying, oh, you're lying to me rather than no, I was lied to. Oh, you, you're being lied to. You were deceived rather than wait a minute. There's evidence here, there's facts that I refuse to look at because it wasn't convenient for me because it confronted my worldview, uh, because it meant that the people who I trusted and believed were lying to me, because it meant that um, I allowed myself to be deceived by my own personal bias. Wow, deep stuff. Okay, so I now wanna give you a brief overview of what Saturn and Aquarius means astrologically for those of you who are kind of new to astrology and I'll try to make it brief because I know some of you are well-versed on it, um, maybe even more so than me. My gosh, there's a lot of brilliant minds out there um, in the astrological community. Leo King being one of them and I would say check out Astrolata's channel. She's really good, um, but for now, let me say this, Saturn, <laughs> um, we have in my house a, a little inside joke we call Saturn Satan. <laughs> um, and there was in fact something called Sat Saturn worship, Satan worship. Um, you, can, you can research that, look that up, okay? So, uh, you know, in tarot, uh, the devil gar card is, you know, representing Sa uh, Saturn, Satan. So... Um, it, there's some truth to it. Um, why, why is Saturn associated with Satan? Um, uh, because, you know, a lot of times it brings frustration. The energy brings, uh, frustration, delays, uh, feeling pressured. Um, and there's restriction and restriction. A lot of times Saturn has to do with authoritarianism or the father. Okay. Um, now, the good thing about Saturn is that if you can strengthen your weaknesses, which, you know, Saturn will reveal, and you can put in the work, which Saturn will demand, then you'll be rewarded, and you'll find achievement, and you'll come into a higher level of strength and maturity. And so, you know, there's, there's, there's a duality to this energy, as with anything, where um, yeah, you're going to get, you know, tested, you, you know, you're going to deal with reality checks in some respect, uh, wherever S Saturn is in your natal chart. Um, but it really makes way for you living in the sober truth that is going to bring you into freedom. And I know some of you are just like, well, you know, I don't really want the sober truth. I don't, I mean, Hey, look, I'm right there with you. Like, could, you know, could we find a nicer way? <laughs> But sometimes, you know, uh, in life, I personally had to learn that I was not going to stop until it became brutally, blatantly clear that the, my way, which was maybe idealistic, it was not grounded and it was, and, and it, that it grounded manifest, manifestation is required. 
you know, to really get beyond these pie in the sky ideals, you know, we have to get into the reality of how do you truly manifest in a grounded way. So the negative side of Saturn is that it can make life feel like it's going slow. Again, particularly in the area where Saturn is in your nail chart, which we'll talk about at the end. Okay. Um, you know, maybe something like, for example, I, I, I've, um, Saturn has been in my ninth house for the last year and a half, actually yeah, over a little, little over a year, year and a half. And so it's just been like drudgery in terms of me trying to embark upon long distance travel and getting back home. I've dealt with limitations, restrictions, having to do with those ninth house things, such as, you know, long distance travel. And, um, you know, these restrictions can make you feel like life is drudgery and that uh, you're being forced to conserve and hold back. Um, it might make you at times feel like, you know, you're caged, limited, trapped in some way, and that can bring about a feeling of depression. Sometimes Saturn is associated with depression. So again, I'm not saying everybody, you know, for those of you who don't really know astrology, I'm not saying everybody's going to be depressed, right? I'm, I'm saying if you were to be depressed, <laughs> it will probably be in the area where Saturn is in your natal chart um, during this transit. And so, um, because Saturn is about sobering up to reality. And the realism can easily get into pessimism, especially if Saturn's testing of you is revealing that you have a weak foundation from which to build. And if you are put under pressure to prove yourself that you have laid a solid foundation from which to build, um, you know, and, it, and it's weak, um, then, you know, you might in some respect, emotionally or otherwise, crack under that type of pressure. Now, the positive is that through this, you gain strength. Like, I remember when I was going through um, Saturn in my eighth house, you know, uh, which I'll talk more about later at the end, but um, just very briefly, you know, that had a lot to do with debt, taxes, shared resources, and I dealt with a lot of restriction, limitation, and it definitely put me in a bit of depression about those issues. Um, but the good news is that it forced me to kind of face those demons head on and deal with them. And so by the time I came out of Saturn transiting through that eighth house, I had gotten a lot more mastery about my money and about my resources that are connected and tied to other people, loans, um, debts, um, spouses, inheritances, stuff like that. I actually came out of that transit uh, financially stronger. I had a stronger um, acumen and I also had more emotional strength to deal with issues that I previously just felt so broken. Like, oh, I don't even want to open that bill. I can't deal with it. You no, know, I started just getting through the tears of it and, you know, dealing with the issues and coming out a lot stronger. So um, you can gain strength. Um, you can also uh, come out of the transit with increased responsibility because of that, because whatever these difficulties are that come up for you, they force you to eliminate any waste or excess in your life that is causing you to, you know, get derailed. Uh, in terms of having um, a sense of purpose and depth and meaning in your life. So um, one thing to keep in mind is that uh, whatever endures a Saturn transit will likely, you know, hold the test of time. For example, um, I've said to people on my channel, you know, particularly like the Cancers right now, they're going through a lot of um, Saturn in their seventh house, as many of them, okay? So, um, and they have been. Uh, and it's going into the eighth, by the way, which I just spoke of, but, um, you know, when Saturn is in that seventh house having to do with partnerships, well, it could be marital partnerships, business partnerships, but I've said to them over the last year, you know, um, if, if your relationship, your partnerships are on the rocks, um, and you are able to make it through uh, 2020, 
uh, with this relationship intact, then it has what it takes to stand the test of time. If not, you know, Saturn was revealing that to you that this can't, this really can't endure. It can't take you where you're going over the long term. Saturn is a lot about going the course, going the distance, right? Endurance. So these are maybe endurance tests that some of you are dealing with, but again, it goes back to where it is falling in your, your chart, okay? Um, there's a lesson always with Saturn. Saturn has a lot to do with karma, okay? So um, there's always some karmic lesson usually that's coming up and, and it, it's mostly having to do with being responsible for yourself, being self-reliant in whichever area of life um, it's showing up for you in terms of house placements. Um, wherever Saturn is, you know, it's it's basically telling you to grow up in that area, right? Like, so when Saturn was in my eighth house, you know, I want to just cry about my money and not open my bills and deal with them. But Saturn's like, oh, honey, uh, no, we don't have time for that. Uh, you better wipe your tears and uh, get on the phone, start talking to people and having conversations that you don't want to have. <laughs> I, you know, the fantastic thing was uh, when you when I faced that demon down, by the way, it, it actually wasn't as scary as what I had imagined. That's another, that's a cool thing that I, that I learned from that time period because I actually got on the phone with some people and I started sending them documentation, you know, and they were like, you know what, you're right. Um, you can't afford to pay us back. And so we are going to put you in a special program where we're going to, um, you know, uh, freeze the interest and absolve you of this for right now. And I'm like, holy crap, I could have never negotiated this before. So, um, you know, and by the way, that was a transit where my, my credit score went up like a hundred points. So, um, more than a hundred points. All right. So again, I, I'm sharing this personal stuff with you, not to make it about me, but to relate to you that even in the darkest, gloomiest stuff, Saturn's like, come on, honey grow up, let's get grounded, let's manifest, let's do what's required in reality for you to, you know, get to those ideals. And Aquarius is a very idealistic sign. We'll talk more about that in a moment. The silver lining here, though, let me say with, with uh, Saturn is that it's going to show you uh, areas in your life where maybe you have felt entitled or you've acted excessively or you were overconfident or maybe sloppy or lazy. You weren't putting in the work or you weren't being thorough. Yeah, that can hurt, you know, that can really hurt. Like you just want to go hide under a rock and not deal with it. You know, it, it makes you deal with it and that's painful. Um, it forces you to, you know, face the way things are. Um, rather than the way that you want to be. Very uncomfortable, but um, it reveals to you maybe some mindsets or poor coping mechanisms that have unnecessarily caused you a lot of frustration in your life, that's caused you to feel let down and feel like you're stuck and stagnating, you know, by letting you kind of in the moment feel that depression, feel the pain of where your way is getting you, um, and maybe even how you've painted yourself into a corner, it's almost like the pressure pushes you to rise above. And so um, it's a time to rise above. How to lighten the load of this heaviness of Saturn? Um, don't fight the lessons, you know, quite simply, right? Instead of like in my example that I just want to not open the, you know, bills from the debt collectors. I want to ignore the phone calls coming in, you know. <laughs> um, I was fighting that when I was doing that, okay. But when Saturn came in that eighth house, I couldn't ignore it anymore. There were circumstances quite frustrating and depressing that were out of my control where I couldn't ignore it anymore. I had to deal with it and I couldn't fight the lessons anymore. And then I learned from that had I not fought it, um, had I decided sooner not to fight it, it would have gone easier for me. So uh, avoid blaming, take responsibility. And yes, I know some of you have plenty to blame, right? When Saturn was in my eighth house, I was in debt because people were in debt to me, right? And I wanted to blame, 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 but I had to come to the end of myself and say, yeah, people owe you money. 
and it's not right, it's not fair, it's unjust. But the reality is they're not paying you back and it's not your fault, but it is your problem. You have to figure out how to answer to your debts even though other people aren't. And that's just something that when Saturn is putting the spotlight on you, Saturn's dealing with you and your issues, not them. Saturn will get to them, right? That's karma. Saturn, Saturn will circle back around and eventually it'll be in that house for them too. And then they have to get dealt with on that stuff. But while Saturn's in that particular house dealing with that issue, you've got to um, get out of blaming, take responsibility, be thorough, you know, right? One a part of my healing with that eighth house stuff was just saying, you know what? I'm going to get spiritual mastery over my money. I'm going to, I am going to get financially, fiscally fit. I'm going to humble myself and acknowledge that I'm not the smartest tool in the shed when it comes to money, right? I'm not really built like that. I'm, I'm more air and water, right? I want to talk about spirituality and, you know, into, and I want to intellectualize and I want to be the philosopher and whatever, but that doesn't really help my credit score. <laughs> it doesn't make my bank account look good, right? And so I acknowledge that flaw that Saturn was revealing in me. And I decided, you know what, because I am weak in this area and I'm not going to lie or deny it to myself, then I'm going to strengthen and be, and I was really, I took myself to task in being thorough in learning more about money and how to strengthen that area of weakness in my life, regardless of others. So, um, Another thing is, you know, if you want to lighten the load of Saturn, um, try to build a long-term vision. Don't expect immediate payoff. And that's the tough part because, um, you know, a lot of us want it like this. We want it to pop these days, especially in the information age. Instant access, instant gratification, you know. Uh, Saturn is not like that. This is about the long haul. This is about putting in the work, but, you know, it would be a realistic expectation from Saturn that if you do the hard work, that you are gonna be rewarded. And I think also accept that with Saturn, there will be some uh, commitments, rules, and structures that are necessary for your long-term happiness, which is kind of this paradox, right? A lot of times, and I'm gonna talk about this as we get a little bit deeper into the message, but Aquarius is a lot about freedom which is in contrast to, you know, Capricorn ruled by Saturn. And we just had Saturn in Capricorn, right? Which was very much about authoritarian, authoritarianism and, you know, status quo and following the rules. And um, so there's this thing going on with, you know, us having to weigh out these, these um, opposing things of, I want to be free, but wait, I have these responsibilities. Um, and how do you balance that out? I'm gonna talk about that in just a moment, but um, try to weed out what's not working and try to find some way to let the failures grow you so you can fail forward, right? That what my example that I was telling you about Saturn in my eighth house, I mean, my God, that damn near destroyed me. Eighth house represents death. I mean, I felt like I was being buried six feet under alive. I ain't going to lie to you. I don't want to scare y'all. That's not going to be everybody's situation who's dealing with Saturn in the eighth house. It was mine because I was going through a lot of midlife crisis energy, which was compounding a lot of other astrological aspects on there that some of you are not dealing with. Okay, so... I don't want to scare you if you're going through it. It's it's probably one of the worst houses for Saturn to go in. I'm again, I'm not lying, but let's stay balanced here. You know, what I went through was a little over the top because I was going through other things in my natal chart that you may not even be going through and you probably aren't. So just, you know, just try to stay level-headed with what I'm saying here, but um, it's hard is my point. And so, yeah, during that time that I went through that, there was a lot of devastating failures in my life and, um, it was hard, you know, to be constructive at a time in my life that felt very destructive. Um, but actually looking back, I, I see, I did, I, I see that I did that. Um, so another thing that I like about astrology that's very helpful to me is, um, 
you, you know, we know we have a time limit. Like, you know, okay, this is, it's, if I'm in the thick of it, I can understand why because of the energy and I know when it's going to end roughly. So that's like when I was going through that difficult um, time with Saturn in my eighth house, I was like, okay, I, ha I knew astrologically when it was coming out of my unique natal chart. And so I would keep telling myself, you're almost done. You're almost through with it. Just get through with it. And I knew what the lesson was of Saturn in the eighth house. And, you know, I, um, I try to use that time constructively. And so that's what I want to encourage you to do, except that there are going to be limitations. I mean, this is something even as I'm looking at my own natal chart um, and where Saturn is, is, and is moving, um, I'm trying to get real with myself about my plans. Like, wow, you know, you're going to have... Saturn in this particular house for this particular time frame um, that you're trying to pull off X, Y, Z, how might this get, these plans get frustrated and how might you be able to uh, work with or work around these limitations? Um, but if you can also remind yourself that in some way the limitations are helping to make way for a more fulfilling life, then, um, that helps you to cope as well. That helps you to see the positive side of things like, right? Like what I was saying with the, my Saturn in the eighth house, um, brutal, but um, I am coming into a lot more of a fulfilling life now because I resolved my debts, my credit scores come up. I'm more financially confident in my own acumen. I feel like whatever life throws my way, I have more confidence in my ability to manage and maneuver through the difficulties. Whereas prior to Saturn in the eighth house, I just felt utterly powerless and wanted to just go bury my head under a pillow, you know? So try to maintain perspective about these things. Okay, so let's talk about, you know, what a Saturn, what do these Saturn transits collectively look like for us? Where are we at right now? Um, where have we been? What brought us here collectively with, you know, most recent Saturn uh, transits like over the last 10 years? And I found a great source over at Cafe Astrology, um, Saturn and Aquarius transits. Uh, they, they talk about this. I'm going to rattle off uh, some time frames from 2000, late 2009 onward, and think back to yourself of what you were going through during these time frames. Um, so from late 2009 until October 2012, uh, Saturn was transiting Libra, a sign having a lot to do with relationships. So did you experience um, you know, one-on-one -on -one committed relationships um, that you were dealing with some level of restriction. It was causing you to look more critically, more seriously at these kind of relationships and imbalances going on in the give and take um, where maybe in the past you tolerated it, but from late 2009 to 2012, it just become blatantly obvious like you can no longer tolerate these imbalances in these one-on-one -on -one relationships. And yeah, maybe marriage, partnership, for those of you who were in a committed relationship during that time. Think back from October 2012 to December 2014, and also June to September of 2015, where Saturn was in Scorpio. Um, and Scorpio is, you know, a lot about, um, other people's resources, uh, intimacy, sex, death, okay, so, um, but a lot of private matters, okay, basically it's, it's what Scorpio represents, so collectively, um, do you recall yourself and other people you knew were kind of digging more deeply into um, these interpersonal dynamics in, in relationships, yeah, having to do with intimacy in these uh, relationships, and also when Saturn moved into Sagittarius from 2015 to 2017, um, control issues, issues of people being excessive, did those come up for review for you during that time? Um, 
because Sagittarius can be associated with that also having to do with beliefs, you know, Sagittarius. So were you questioning your faith, things that you had previously put a lot of faith in? Was it now suddenly coming up for review of, do I still believe that? And where do I fit in now with my current beliefs? Um, and then with Saturn and Capricorn, which we're coming out of right now, you know, that started in late 2017. Obviously, as I mentioned earlier, ending this month on the 21st, no, on the 17th, got my dates wrong. Um, yeah. This is a time where we have been looking at all things Capricornian, authority, people in authority, uh, governments, institutions, you know, um, status quo, you know, um, matters having to do with being responsible. And a lot of us have had to put in um, a lot of hard work during this time. This has been an energy where I think over the last year and a half there's been i'm sorry last two and a half years there's been a lot of uh you know with saturn and capricorn a lot of uh fears around self-preservation security stability a lot of people found themselves making decisions in a very and at least i did i can relate to this making decisions on what has to be done versus what I want to do is what you need to do, right? In order to maintain stability and security because Capricorn is very concerned about that kind of stuff. Like Capricorn doesn't really care about your feelings. It's like, like this is what we got to do, honey. Suck it up. Um, and so um, there might have been fears of scarcity that you had, that other people had. Look, think about that toilet paper nonsense that went on earlier this year. I mean, it's like, really? <laughs> You're afraid of not having toilet paper? Yes, people were. <laughs> um, anyway, um, it's fear of losing things too. Fear of not having enough. Um, that powerfully motivated a lot of people. And then as we shift into Saturn into uh, Aquarius, um, connection becomes more important, um, connecting with people or something larger than ourselves, um, like groups or movements, uh, we're going to see that is going to become more of an issue. I'll talk more about that in a moment, but let me say with, with Saturn and Aquarius, um, this is a dignified placement for Saturn where it functions well, but, um, it, it could cause us to really take a critical look at um, our ideals and our goals and our wishes and our dreams. These, you know, all things Aquarian, right? Uh, very idealistic sign. And um, we could see some dark stuff come out of that, right? I mean, I, I've had to, even myself as an Aquarian, over the last month or so, I found myself coming to the sober reality check of, uh, okay, so what if it doesn't get easier? What if it doesn't get easier? How do I get what I want despite it not getting easier? Um, what if I don't have the support that I want and need to get where I'm going? Um, how do I um, connect to people and groups um, and causes that, that will help me fulfill those ideals? Um, it's Friendship and community involvement is probably going to become a lot more important uh, as with Saturn and Aquarius, but I think we're going to look at those things more critically because Saturn is going to basically say, well, that's great. You have those hopes and wishes now. I mean, how do you make that happen? How do you get out of the ethers and or the stratosphere more like more? Uh, more accurately, Aquarius is in the stratosphere and Saturn is like, uh, you need to bring it down to earth, honey. That's a cute little dream you're having, but you know, how do you make that a reality here on planet mundane, you know, <laughs> prison planet, which might feel like for some people, especially after this year, but I digress. So Saturn and Capricorn might've been more about preserving the self, building your own kingdom, Whereas Saturn and Aquarius is more about preserving the group. 
And, you know, I'm going to talk more about this because I think a lot of people misunderstand this to mean that we're going to go in the way of, of socialism and collectivism. And I think that's where they're misunderstanding Aquarius. But um, anyway, back to what has happened over the last two and a half years of Saturn and Capricorn. Well, we've had to, um, we've been forced to make, you know, the right decisions and choices and some of that has come through painful realizations of you know what's not going to be right for us as much as we don't want to see that or accept that Capricorns just like suck it up you know so the positive of that is that um, it's enabled us to clear out the dead wood in our lives like what is not moving us forward where is there not any growth what is impeding us getting growth? We've had to critically consider our own contributions and others and, you know, cut back. I got to tell you, the last three months I've been restructuring my business and part of the restructuring is, well, I'm paying money out to these people every month for this service, but is this profiting me? Am I getting a return on investment? No, it's not. Cancel. Let me go somewhere else. Let me see, you know, where else I can get a more equivalent exchange or an, um, an exchange that actually is advancing me. And sometimes that's hard, you know, like we don't want to part ways with things or we don't want to accept that, well, I thought this was going to be it, but it ain't it. Got to part ways, you know, um, and maybe realize that where you need to partner is not what you thought or not, maybe not what you want to want to think. But again, it's with what works. So um, also this Capricornian energy that we've been in over the last two and a half years has made it really necessary to prioritize um, quality over quantity and be very, like I said, realistic about the ideals, goals, and plans. And we're going to see a continuation of that as we get, you know, Saturn moving into Aquarius. All right. So let's get to what I'm really here to talk to you about. The thing that just kind of, there, there's a lot of people that have really great reports on on this Saturn and Aquarius, okay? I'm, I'm not throwing any shade, all right? But, you know, sometimes it kind of rattles me as an Aquarian to hear some people give their interpretation of the energy, which might be textbook accurate, textbook Aquarian. But again, if you know, how do you really know if you're not an Aquarian? And I am, I'm, you know, Aquarius, Sun, um, Mercury, and Midheaven. What that means for those of you who don't understand is I, I am an Aquarian, okay? But Mercury and Aquarius means I talk and I think like an Aquarian. Midheaven and Aquarius means that my life purpose, destiny has a lot to do with all things Aquarius. By the way, these placements are in my 10th house, which is very Capricornian, very Saturnian. So, um, you know, to me, I want to give my perspective coming from that energetic signature of really living this energy, okay? Um, and I kind of, yeah, I do get my feathers ruffled a little bit when people talk about this energy, having not really lived it, because um, I, I get a lot of people uh, in the New Age community are putting a very left-wing spin. I, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. It's a, it's a very, you know, very politically biased. There's, there's a, um, you, you can almost hear it in what they're saying, it, that they perceive because Aquarius is the humanitarian of the Zodiac, um, they perceive that Aquarius wishes to bring about socialism, communism, collectivism, um, and even sadly that, you know, the, another belief I've seen from some of these people in this circle is that with Saturn in Aquarius, um, that this is going to be a time where um, advances will be made by the internet or overlords to um, make the collective safe by, you know, controlling free speech. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> 
No wrong. No, not this aquarium. I'll just say that much, okay? Absolutely not. This is the lowest expression of Aquarius energy possible. Um, and I will explain why. Um, I do believe that during the next two and a half years, some of what they're saying is valid. We will see, though, both low and uh, high expressions of Aquarian energies emerge. There's dualities with energies, right? There's, there's a high and a low expression. And so um, that is going to offer us collectively two paths forward. Do we want to take the high road or the low road? And my advice, you know, take the road less traveled, which is the high road, okay? The highest expression of Aquarian, which will not be, sorry if this upsets some of your belief systems, but it's not going to be about socialism, uh, collectivism. It's going to be about individualism uh, because when we have free individuals, we have a free society. I know. It's shocking, right? Shocking revelation here. Um, and so I'll, I'll talk more about that in a moment. Let me just say that, you know, again, because of my experience with my Aquarius placements in the 10th house, Capricornian, Saturnian, because my Mars in Capricorn, um, having two parents that are Capricorn, um, I'm speaking from this angle, okay? And if you disagree with me, fine, fair enough. I, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with that. But um, I do also feel that not only will there be two paths uh, opened up to us, high and low expressions, um, immature, lower developed Aquarian energies versus uh, mature, um, what some would call high vibe. <laughs> if, if that lingo resonates with you and you understand what I'm saying, you know, um, you know, we can take the, the higher, the low road, but, um, I'm also thinking that as we progress through, uh, as Saturn progresses through Aquarius into the higher degrees that God willing, uh, you know, humanity will mature and start operating in these higher expressions. Um, obviously, look at this year with Aquarius in Saturn during March, zero, one degrees. Very, like, I don't even know what's going on here. This is, I need, I'm having to learn the truth here. I'm having to discern the truth here. I'm having to do my research, you know? And there was a lot of conformity, almost Capricornian. I told you, these degrees are more Capricornian leaning, but I think as we get closer, if we, as we get further away from 2020, it starts becoming more Piscean leaning, right? And hopefully more mature where people are like, no, we're not following um, status quo when status quo is not serving individual liberties that ultimately serves humanity. So um, I think actually we've, uh, Hopefully we've gone through the worst of it, 2020. Um, although as the truth comes out more blatantly, uh, some people might not quite see it that way because the truth is offensive. Anyway, um, let's talk about the about Aquarius in the highest versus lowest expressions. Aquarius is about information and technology. So you know, this idea that we're going to have these, you know, big tech overlords come in and protect humanity from crazy conspiracy theorists nuts. By the way, this is all gaslighting. Um, you know, no, 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 no. Uh, Aquarius in its highest expression understands that information and technology is used to empower people not to disempower them. And, you know, Aquarius is about truth, sincerity, and authenticity. Yes, I know there are some Aquarians who lie, right? Humans are human, right? <laughs> uh, anybody can do it, right? But in the, in the highest expression of Aquarius, we cannot lie. We would rather offend somebody than lie to them. And so um, this is an energy of 
people having the information to make clear choices and decisions. But you can't do that when there's censorship. You can't do that if people are not fully informed to give their consent. And so I'm gonna say, you know, that any kind of censorship going on is very anti-Aquarian or at best low expressions of Aquarian energy. And here's the thing about Aquarius, you know, we're co-rolled by Saturn, but also Uranus. So, you know, I'm, you know, there's a part of us that is, can be very Capricornian. We can follow the rules, okay? But what makes us different from the Capricorn energy is we know when to break it. At least the higher expressions do. Yes, you will get some lower vibrational Aquarians who are rebelling just for the sake of rebelling. That's foolishness. Um, the highest expression of this in Aquarius is um, discerning when to break rules and when to follow them. And that's based on knowing that the rules that need to be kept and maintained are the ones that ensure freedom for everybody. Rules that disempower people, put them in bondage, those need to get broken under high vibe <laughs> uh, Aquarian. And so, um, yeah, any kind of rules that oppress and disempower, this is what will be broken by higher vibe um, Aquarians. And yes, some of them might get called, you know, rebellious. But again, there's a time and a place and a season for everything under God. So it's really about having the discernment to know when and where. Um, what they're going to call, what they might call rebellion might actually be revolution because Aquarian is very nonconformist. It will buck the status quo. Um, this is not about rebelling for the sake of rebelling, just to show you that I can and that how dare you tell me what to do. Oh, no, 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 that's foolishness, okay? Um, this is not about getting freedom to escape responsibility. This is about, or, or reality, okay? Um, this is, or, you know, breaking the rules for, you know, just for the sake of breaking them. Um, this is about... Um, freedom coming with responsibility and causing a revolution so that people are getting their power back, their individual freedom and liberty back. But in order to do this in a really conscious way, you have to make clear decisions that are very purpose driven and have meaning. And Aquarius is, you know, again, on a high vibe, going to do that. With Aquarius, we're very other focused and um, having a sense of belonging and acceptance is very important to us. Um, and the more mature you get as an Aquarian, uh, the more you understand the duality of this, that, um, you know, other implies self, self implies others. So, you know, as you evolve, you become more cognizant of the reality that in considering other people, I must also consider myself. And people who are considering themselves must consider, right? We can't lose ourselves in the group. We can't lose our individual liberties for the group because ultimately that doesn't serve the group. And there's another lesson that I've had to learn as I've matured as an Aquarian that, you know, Agreement doesn't necessarily equal acceptance. This is a fine art, relationship art to develop <laughs> in your relationships, okay? Where you, um, you learn to accept people even though you don't agree with them. You learn that sometimes people who um, accept you don't necessarily agree with you and not getting those two things confused. There's also this in issue of integration versus fragmentation or compartmentalization. And I've been accused of doing this a lot, you know, being told that I compartmentalize things. Um, and that sometimes with Aquarius, you only get aspects of this person. But again, I think as you get more mature as an Aquarian, you start asking yourself, how can I integrate all of these aspects of myself that I may have disowned, right? Like I've, so been into others that I've disowned myself. 
How do I incorporate both at the same time? How do I ensure that my individual uh, liberties are protected in a way that also promotes and ensures freedom for the group? Um, it's a weighing these things out and being inclusive in that respect where you're not disowning your own needs and your own individual rights. There's another issue with Aquarians where we can be ahead of our time. A lot of people say usually we're about 10 years ahead of our time. Not my words, but I read it several from different sources. Aquarians are usually about 10 years ahead of their time. So um, we have a very unpredictable, changeable energy with that part of us that's co-ruled by Uranus. Sometimes shock value, you know, and the things that we say, the truth that just gets delivered. <laughs> Uh, like a sword, you know, driving a sword, a dagger through somebody's heart with the truth, you know, get to the heart of the matter that can be quite shocking and abrupt to um, and abrasive to other signs, as particularly the more sensitive signs like the water signs. Okay. And what I've had to learn as an Aquarian as I've gotten older is that I've had to accept that uh, some people are never going to accept and like no matter what you do, they're never going to accept you. Um, or, you know, coming to an understanding that other people are, some people are just never going to understand. No matter how much you tell them or show them or it, it's, they're never going to accept you. They're never going to un understand you. But if you know that it's right, you do it anyway, regardless. If you have to swim against the stream, you do it. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I have learned to try to weigh out, you know, um, my words a little bit more carefully uh, so that it's not so shocking and disruptive and abrasive to certain people uh, because we don't want to hurt people, consciously hurt people with the truth. Um, and yes, yeah, sometimes that part of us that is very, uh, you know, changeable, you know, innovative, quick to uh, make changes um, can feel very destabilizing and insecure to other people. And so we, we've got to be cognizant of this but at the same time you can't let the group run you there are things like like with this whole vaccine stuff going on right now my understanding is there's a lot of people saying i'm not taking it i'm not taking it. i'm like wow hell where were you uh 21 years ago when i was the weirdo telling all my friends and family that i'm not vaccinating my kids and by the way, all three of my children are vaccine free, 100%. And uh, no regrets, absolutely no regrets. And, um, but I was the weirdo. And now finally, 21 years later, people um, are not thinking me so strange as they did before. Um, are you willing to be the Lone Ranger? Are you willing to do what the group thinks is crazy or nuts or well, everybody else is doing it. That's Capricorn, right? Every, I mean, well, I mean, we were fine. We went through it. What happened? You know, I don't know why you have a problem with it. Why are you, why are, are you stupid? You know, this is the kind of stuff that I got treated with when I uh, went against the grain, swam against the current, thought differently from the group, broke away from group think and embraced individual think. <laughs> you know, um, are you willing to... Uh, to do that, that's something that is probably going to get tested during this time. And like I said, Aquarius in the highest expression, I believe, is uh, not going to conform to groupthink, particularly if groupthink is oppressive to that individual's freedom and ultimately the truth. Okay, so what do we want to watch out for? I mean, there are dark sides to Aquarius. And um, I would say watch out for these kind of Merovingian types, you know, like we saw them, uh, if any of you have watched The Matrix, um, he's one of my favorite characters, very evil guy though. Um, the Merovingian in The Matrix is an information trafficker. Unfortunately, he's working for the dark side. He's trying to control the flow of information to keep people enslaved. And that would be a really dark aspect, in my opinion, of Aquarius, uh, Saturn and Aquarius. What we want to see ideally in a high expression is that information is being used to 
um, empower people and free people. Another dark aspect of Aquarius uh, is losing itself and others, self-denial, self-sacrificing, getting lost in causes. So I want to give you a pro tip that, you know, um, getting around in Aries will help you with this because Aries is about the self, right? Which is opposite of Aquarius, which is about the other. Um, and, and by the way, I, I'm going to talk about it in a moment for those of you who have, who are Aquarian and quite possibly have your, um, have, have Saturn moving into Aquarius into your first house, you may find that over the next two and a half years, an Aries is, um, of some karmic value. Maybe there's some kind of lesson there. Uh, and vice versa, because, um, you know, 11th house stuff is showing up for Aries over the next uh, couple years, you know, with this transit where Aries are dealing with all things Aquarian and getting restrictions or karma attached to all things Aquarian. So there's some kind of mirroring going on with that where perhaps there's something you can learn. You know, if you have an issue with this where you're losing yourself in group think, um, or you are allowing yourself to self-sacrifice for the greater good, which is code word for socialism, communism, by the way. Um, greater good philosophies, don't get me started. I don't want to make this into a political podcast. <laughs> anyway, um, Aries will keep you out of that, okay? Aries is really good about that. And so, um, you know, also just try to remain mindful over the next two and a half years if, you know, what if the group wants what isn't in your best interest as an individual? I mean, how far are you willing to go with this kind of group think philosophy? Are you willing to sacrifice yourself for the group? Is that really noble? If the group actually needs you to individua individuate, yeah, that's what I'm looking for. <laughs> okay, overly idealistic, my God, I deal with this to a fall. I'm gonna be the first to admit it because I've got a lot of Pisces placements. And as I mentioned earlier, I'm a third decan Aquarian, very Pisces leaning. So, um, you know, one thing that you can do is to prevent this is really try to keep yourself grounded in your expectations over the next two and a half years, particularly in the house that this is getting into for you. Um, where Saturn is transiting your chart, you know, you know, talk yourself through this. Like you're going to have to apply more effort. Don't be surprised by it. Don't be shocked. Um, don't be dismayed also if the results are delayed and not quick, quickly forthcoming. <laughs> um, and maybe, you know, realize that some things are worth fighting for. Yeah. Aquarian, the revolutionary is willing to fight for the truth. Um, and freedom. So um, if you can bring yourself back down to earth and say, you know, in this particular area of my life, whatever house is being transited, okay, I'm going to have to put the work in. Um, the results are not going to come quickly or easily, um, but this is worth fighting for. Um, then that can probably help you get, you know, from getting Neptuned out, you know, out of this reality, if you know what I mean. Another dark aspect of Aquarius um, is the God complex, right? We get accused of it. I get accused of it a lot. And you know why Aquarians have it? It's because it's our motto. Our motto is, I know. Capricorn motto is, I use. Oh, I'm not making this stuff up. Go look it up. These are not my words. These are, you know, just go look it up. Uh, you know, each sign has a motto. <laughs> So Aquarian's motto is, I know. It's very important to us, particularly if you get around someone like me who's got their Mercury in Aquarius, like we have got to know. It will drive us batshit crazy to not know. We have a fear of not knowing, okay? And I do believe knowledge is power. One of my favorite Bible verses is uh, Hosea 4, 6, my people perish for a lack of knowledge. Knowledge will preserve life. It talks about that in the book of Ecclesiastes. Knowledge can preserve life. Yeah, it can also add to sorrow, but it preserves life. So, I mean, I'm, I'm a big believer in knowledge. And so when I speak up and I say something, I come from this point of conviction because I really have applied myself to reading, researching, investigating, studying 
um, because I value the truth so much. And um, unfortunately, we come across as overly opinionated a lot of times. The dark, darkest expression of this is where we put our opinions above people. And that's something I've, I'll be honest with you, I've had to work through myself, you know, of, of realizing um, that people need to come first. And sometimes um, people, they're only able, they're only ready to deal with the truth that they're able to deal with. Sometimes, again, Aquarius can be 10 years ahead and you're talking about vaccine safety and injuries and what, and they're, they, they're not there and they won't be there for another 20 years. You're like 20 years ahead and they can't handle it. They can't process, they don't want to. It's paradigm shattering and they can't deal with a reality. And so, you know, and then you try to like push it and they break under the pressure because they don't have the internal security to deal with that truth. So as an Aquarian, I've had to learn how to, you know, prioritize people over opinions. Uh, sometimes I, you know, fail miserably at that. <laughs> it's the gift curse of Aquarius. Um, but I want to say that collectively, I do want us to all be on the lookout for this type of energy manifesting from authority figures um, coming off with this type of I know what's best for you and everybody else. I want to argue that if, you know, you're dealing with people who think that they're smarter than other people and that gives them the right to choose other people's choices for them. This is very dangerous. And I and and there are, unfortunately are a lot of people out there that believe this way. They think the authorities need to tell you what to do and mandate and force because you don't know how to make your own decisions. You don't know how to think for yourself and that it's dangerous. So I want to argue that if you cannot trust people to think for themselves, then, you know, how are you going to be able to trust people in power, in government, to make decisions for other people? Uh, we, we've really got to stop this type of dangerous thinking. Um, the other dark aspect, finally, that I want to mention is being too different. Aquarians are very unique. We pride ourselves on being unique individuals okay to the point that maybe we get we get laughed out a lot about it you know people think we're out to lunch <laughs> um and so you know um it can cost you things that maybe you really valued um a, a feeling of happiness purpose meaning in your life i've dealt with these situations where you know i self-muzzled because it's not that i'm being fake again which aquarius gets accused a lot about being fake but sometimes if Aquarius tries to be authentic and say, look, here's a unique person I really am, well, you get outcasted from the group. They don't identify with your differences. You know, it's very tribal thinking, okay? Um, you're not one of us. And, um, and then Aquarius so wants to belong and be accepted that they're uh, trying to fit in with things that maybe they ought not. And it might be as a matter of survival. You know, I've been... Um, as a single mom had to take jobs and work with people who I really didn't agree with. And there were conversations that came up at the table or that I just wouldn't broach. I muzzled because I was afraid of, you know, getting, you know, having workplace drama or getting fired or they wouldn't want to work with me because, oh, you're, you think like that. Um, even a lot of, a lot of people on social media have gotten to the point where they're trying to hide at least, you know, maybe, I don't know how this is going to continue in the future. Okay. This is going to go one of two ways. We're going to see more of these people self muzzling and we're going to see other people like to hell with you. I don't care what you think. Um, this is who I am, you know, type thing, um, where, so that people can find their tribes, you know, but I think over the last two and a half years, minimum, if not over the last decade, uh, people have been very afraid to speak out on issues for fear of economic retribution, you know, being doxxed. We see that even recently, uh, over the last month or so, people getting doxxed and called out on social media, like, oh, you believe XYZ in putting this person's full name and their address 
and saying, oh, let's make sure all these people don't get hired, you know, because they don't believe like the group. They don't believe politically correct things, you know. So um, dangerous stuff, um, you know, I, I just want to encourage you as you're examining where you draw the line on this, you know, um, ask yourself if you're trying to fit in with things that you really shouldn't. Is it, and if you are, is this because you can't find your own tribe or you're not willing to go it alone until you do? Okay, so I'm gonna make some predictions for um, definitely 2021. Um, and some of this is based on astrology. Some of it is based on my own intuitive nudges and hunches. Others, uh, other of uh, these these other predictions are based on um, looking at people who are like trends forecasters. For example, uh, Gerald Salente. You might want to check him out uh, here on YouTube. And he's been around for a long, long time. Older guy, very seasoned with his work. And he's actually like following trends of statistics of what people are doing and he talks about it from a, a more of a statistical perspective than say astrological or intuitive so what i'm giving you a mix of is a mix of this okay um number one gerald salente and i have to agree with him on this was saying we're going to be dealing in 2021 with some vax free and tax free movements um obviously if you want to know more about that go check out his channel but um I think that we're gonna have some um, ideas where again, the people start bucking with their individual freedom and saying, listen, if you wanna wear a hazmat suit to you know, get on with your day, then go right ahead. That's your choice. You're, you have the freedom to choose if, if you wanna put on a hazmat suit for all we care, but don't force everybody else. You cannot force everybody else if that's what you want to do, you're free to go do it, but you can't force other people to do it. And um, so we're going to see a lot of people asserting their individual rights um, and sovereignty. We're already seeing some states talking about secession. Texas, I'm from Texas, and we recently had uh, Alan West, head of the GOP, uh, suggesting in a public statement, you know, that perhaps the um, states in the in the U.S. that wish to follow the Constitution should bond together and form a union separate from the 50 states. So powerful stuff. And we could see more uh, people joining the secession union wanting to get out of the United States, the group, and, and individuate more as, hey, we're going to become distinctive as states that follow the U.S. Constitution. They're, they're drawing the lines on this, okay, where people are wanting to exercise their sovereignty and individual rights as opposed to these socialist, communist, collective type movements that we see a lot of uh, with Agenda 21 and the Great uh, Reset coming out of the World uh, Economic Forum. Um, where these people are openly, brazenly bragging about how, you know, you're not going to have your private property. They're saying you'll own nothing by 2030 if it's up to them, and you're going to be happy about it. Um, so quite the paradox there. Um, do you want to go the route of socialism, which I would argue is Aquarius losing itself, its individual freedoms and liberties to the group, versus higher expression of Aquarius, where Aquarius knows that um, when it does what's best for Aquarius, that benefits the group and the collective. Um, I'm going to predict that more people during these this next year are going to be questioning where they belong, reassessing maybe people who they thought they belonged with, they, 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 they realize now authentically they don't align with those groups um, or those individuals. And so um, connection, authentic connection is probably going to be a motivating cause for disconnection from certain people, groups, um, really investigating on 
on a micro level, on an individual level, where do I be, where do I end and where do other people begin? Because I really see that with these movements, these collectivist movements, they're trying to encroach upon, you know, the individual. Online businesses, I'm going to say that because of all the, the oversaturation, which I mentioned earlier in this video, that um, I'm deeply sensing that the way that this is going to move forward um, with online businesses is that audiences and followers are going to be grown uh, from a holistic approach where basically um, you people are connecting with the whole person rather than just fragments of the person. Like for example, when I started my channel in 2017, it's very fragmented. You only got one aspect of me, which was tarot reader or astrologer or spiritual, right? But you may have noticed that part of the transformation with my channel is like, you know, doing live chats where I'm opening up and getting on a more personal uh, relational level with my audience and also putting up content that gets into other aspects of life like relationship coaching and uh, conscious politics and uh, alternative health and healing, like looking at the wholeness of life so that, you know, I'm not just connecting with people who are here for, you know, astrology or tarot. I'm connecting with people who are here for, we're making a connection, like on a relational note, <laughs> you know, uh, networking, social networking note. This is um, not just a surfacey uh, connection. There's actually, it, it's the whole person that we're connecting to, not just fragments of the person. And so, and there's actually an exchange going on that's two way versus one way. Right, because like when I began this channel, it was just I'm uploading videos where I'm talking at, talking at, talking at, and now my channel has evolved where I'm talking with more. There's more of an engagement back and forth with live chats or when I premiere my uh, videos and I'm in the live chat talking to people and uh, on my community page and uh, really trying to bring you in and, and have an authentic connection with people beyond the surfacey, fragmented facet of just one aspect of who I am, right? Um, because look, the reality is, if people can go to like 10,000 other tarot readers, why would they come to me? The only reason they will come to me is because I'm offering them a connection, an authentic connection as a person, a whole person, that they're not getting elsewhere. And so this is, I think, way, the way of the future um, if online businesses, uh, entrepreneurs are to um, be distinct um, or to make themselves more distinctive from them, their competitors, they're going to have to get beyond the fragmentation and compartmentalization and they're going to have to integrate the wholeness of themselves and, you know, their relationships. I am also going to predict that um, the big tech suppression that we've seen this year with the congressional hearings and whatnot is going to move people to decentralized platforms. I mean, I've been thinking about it already the last couple months. Uh, I went over to TikTok, but uh, I'm actually now thinking I'm probably going to go over to Parler, Rumble, um, might even look at uploading to BitChute, Library, NewTube, which are alternatives to, you know, YouTube, alternatives to Twitter, alternatives to uh, Facebook, because the decentralization is going to prevent the censorship and the algorithms, uh, blacklisting, shadow banning, uh, you know, certain narratives that don't go along with their status quo, okay? Um, we're already seeing, and by the way, I've, I've said this before and I'll say it again ad nauseum, if you own stock in any of these big tech companies, I strongly encourage you to get out of it now 
because lawsuits are coming in 2021 for all these big tech companies, um, not just the social media platforms, but the companies associated with them. I'd get your money. If you have any stocks in big tech, I'd get out of it now because there's a major shakeup coming. Uh, people have had it and they're, they're going to other platforms that are decentralized. Um, finally, old masquerading as new versus real innovation. Okay, so back to this, you know, the politics of it, um, socialist ideas, you know, are being touted as, you know, the, the new and the whatever, you know, um, this is all BS, uh, Neptunian, Pisces media programming that we're, we gotta, we gotta purge with the South Node that I talked about in the astrology portion. Look, um, socialist ideas are nothing new. Uh, they've been touted, you know, since, you know, over 2000 years. Okay. Um, people have been living under different manifestations of socialism or communism, whether it was openly called that or not. It's not a new idea. Living in a feudal, uh, a modern day feudalism where we have overlords and a lot of peasants, like a, a, a lot of, I mean, a, very few kings and a whole lot of peasants. Um, you know, this is um, not a new idea. But actually, what is new is a constitutional republic, which is the United States, 244 years old. Yeah, that's, that's a baby country in the grand scheme of things. That is a, a baby, um, you know, political ideology in the grand scheme of things. We are considered the great experiment to have a constitutional republic, okay? This is, this is what is new, okay? Um, people who are trying to bring social over he socialism over here, communism over here under the code words progressivism, which is really regressive, okay, because it goes back to ideas that have been, um, you know, of socialism that have failed for over 2,000 years. Um, people are going to try to sell the old as new when we really need to be embracing um, what is truly new, and that is um, coming back around to this um, great experiment, which is the uh, constitutional republic we see in the United States, only 244 years old. Okay, very quickly, very generally, because there are a lot of people out there that are putting out excellent reports along these lines. I don't want to reinvent the wheel, but I know many of you are itching to know, so I'm going to put it very generally here. Um, and if you do want to know more um, from me, I, I wrote about this last year, Saturn transiting through the houses, um, but it was written in 2020. So, I mean, if you want to go back to that blog post that I put out on my blog at thecrownlife.com, how Saturn's taking you to task in 2020, what good can come from it, uh, go check it out over there. And um, I go into a lot of great detail over, you know, how the different signs are going to be impacted, but realize that it's moving a sign forward. Um, so whatever I'm saying, Saturn, whatever house I'm saying Saturn is in in 2020, well, it'll be that next house, right? So if it's first house, then it'll be second house, right? Aquarians last year, I was talking to y'all about it, how it's in your 12th house. Well, this year it's in your first house, so go read first house. But I do have to make, make this um, big disclaimer, first off, is uh, this is another reason why I want to keep it kind of general, other than the fact that other people have already done it and I don't want to reinvent the wheel. Well, you know, honestly, um, you know, for the greatest accurate, accuracy, you need to look at your natal chart, okay? So, because like, I'm an Aquarian and I'm telling the Aquarians, well, you know, Saturn's going into your first house, but that's very general, okay? When we look at your actual natal chart, um, it might be something else, you know? And it is for me, okay, actually. Um, the closest you can get without, you know, actually looking specifically at your chart right now is um, follow according to your rising sign, all right? But again, there might be a little something there, right? For, so for example, um, 
I'm a Taurus rising and I'm about to tell the Tauruses that, you know, this is transiting their 10th house. And so as a Taurus rising, well, is that true? Mm, yes and no. Taurus, um, uh, my Taurus rising, uh, you know, with my, given my, my natal chart in astrology, um, Saturn won't be going through that house, that 10th house until late February. Right, collectively, we're all dealing with Saturn in Aquarius on the 17th. But what house it's actually hitting in on that date will be different for all of you. So actually on the uh, 17th, it will be hitting my ninth house where it has been since late 2019. But come late uh, February 2021, then it finally goes into the 10th house, which I'm telling you, Taurus, risings where it is going to be you see what i'm saying so if you want the most accuracy look exactly at uh, where saturn is in your natal uh, transiting your natal chart on the 17th of december 2020 or currently when you're watching this and then you will know how this is impacting you and if you don't know how to do that kind of stuff you can come to me for a reading fyi i do I'm doing 12 month forecasts for money and love, okay? And not only do I look at your astrology for the year ahead, but I, you know, pull cards. So uh, for some of you, if you wanna know about that, go over to my website at uh, thecrownedones.weebly.com. Uh, I'll have the link down below and it's on my contact page. You can get a private reading if you're interested. That being said, let's get into it. Um, and I'm gonna start with Capricorn. Um, you are dealing with uh, Saturn transiting your second house, so this has a lot to do with you continuing to lay foundations that you have been laying over the last two and a half years. Um, when Saturn was in your first house and you were starting a whole new 29-year uh, cycle, which Aquarius is now getting into. So, uh, you know, you dealt with a lot of karma attached to yourself, okay? But now uh, with Saturn going into your second house, um, you could be dealing with karma related to all things Taurian, all right? Uh, maybe a Taurus, uh, there's, you, you might be coming across Taurus people, people with Taurus placements in their chart. Uh, but generally second house has to do with, you know, your values, your self-worth your um possessions and so uh, but it is again you're you're still laying foundations but this is like okay are you laying a foundation in terms of what you really value at this time in your life not what you valued <laughs> prior to 2017 right what do you value now according to the new brand new you that hopefully you rediscovered over the last two and a half years are you laying foundations in those new values all right and Aquarius um, you have Saturn transiting your first house so this is a whole brand new 29 year cycle that Capricorn just went through and um, you could be dealing with karma related to um, all things Aries okay so perhaps an Aries in your life is of meaning by the way, you know, they've got karma attached to Aquarius as well. There's some mirroring going on here. So um, if, if it doesn't have to do with an Aries person, it might be that um, it's karma attached to your sense of self and the way that you are presenting yourself out in the world. And you're laying new foundations that are going to carry you for the next 29 year cycle so you have to lay this very carefully um who do you want to be how do you want to be seen out in the world what persona what sense of self do you want to portray in this new i don't even want to say chapter this new um series within your life major stuff so be very conscientious about it because um, whatever foundations you lay over the next two and a half years, uh, really five, okay, I'm gonna say that, um, 
you kind of be living with them for quite some time. So be very diligent, be very thorough, be very mindful about the sense of self that you wish to create over the next 29 years because you're laying the foundation right now. Um, Pisces, you have Saturn in your 12th house. As an Aquarian, just, you know, a lot of us went through that, okay? Um, and this is a house of the subconscious. It's very Piscean. <laughs> um, so you, you're dealing with... I'm going to say you might be dealing with some Pisces, okay? Um, or it could be your own energy that you're dealing with your own karma um, during this time. Also, hidden enemies. It's a house of hidden enemies, but it's also the past. And so this is you coming out of a 29-year cycle where you're having to kind of purge and release. And it's it, at times, it can feel, feel very isolating and alone. And spirit, if you feel that way... Spirit might be allowing it because you need that quiet time to really sit back and think about uh, what do you want to take with you into the next 29-year cycle. Um, and sometimes, you know, this can be difficult, all right? There could be a feeling of disillusionment with this, but um, it's important to do the work. And if it, if you got to be alone for some time to do it, then, then do it, do the work, because you don't want to carry these whatever the self-sabotage the hidden enemies you don't want to bring it with you um and moving on to aries <laughs> as i mentioned um you know in the aquarius portion you know you've got this in your 11th house which is all things aquarius so you know in some respect there might be karma attached to an aquarian or perhaps there are karmic lessons that Aquarian is bringing you or you're bringing them. There's some karmic uh, tie there or lesson. Um, or for some of you, it is simply having to do with wishes, ideals, goals, um, social networking, friend groups. And so in some way and hope, wow, and I'm, I'm also seeing that you know, 11th house is Aquarius. You get Saturn and Aquarius in a house that represents Aquarius. Wow, Aries, that's a whole lot of Aquarius going on. Buckle up, baby. <laughs> yeah, you know, and it's it's odd because I just told the Aquarians earlier um, that it, or really I told the collective, if you're having trouble losing yourself, your individuality, the group thing, go get around an Aries to learn from them because Aries will show you, right? Y'all are really good at that stuff. So, but I'm gonna say this, you know, um, Maybe you need to plug in, but maybe there are challenges with you plugging into others because I don't know that this is natural for you, right? You're about the self and Aquarius is about other and there's some mirroring going on. And I said this before, you know, um, Aquarius in its highest expression understands that other implies self, self implies other. There's a mirroring there. There's a duality. So is there some karmic lesson, Aries, that you've got to understand or that Aquarius in your life needs to understand, or the two of you are understanding together that there's some uh, balancing here between the individual and the group. And um, and when things are in balance, then it becomes healthy, right? So moving on to Taurus, um, you've got Saturn moving through your 10th house on fellow Taurus rising, all right? This aspect for me, as I mentioned earlier, is actually, you know, I, we've got Saturn in Aquarius happening on the 17th, but specific to my natal chart, I won't have it move into my 10th house until late February. So um, I'm, I'm looking forward to this. And again, look at where it is in your natal chart, Taurus, but um, regardless of when exactly precisely this hits you, um, the 10th house is a lot about career, status, authorities, authority figures, father figures. Um, so perhaps in some way, a Capricorn or, you know, a boss, a male figure, a father figure is of, of relevance to you or there will be some karmic lesson attached to that. And um, maybe status becomes very important to you and your career and your profession. And this could be a time where... 
Um, you, I saw my Sagittarian daughter, by the way, recently go through this transit and uh, Saturn in her 10th house. And during that time, a lot of promotions, a lot of raises, but a lot more responsibility and duty. And so very Capricornian, okay? So what I'm seeing is a lot of kind of a, a double, double almost Capricorn energy with that uh, Saturn, which rules um, Capricorn moving into Aquarius in your 10th house, which is a Capricornian house. So a lot of Capricorn going on there, be aware of that. And uh, I'm hearing social climbing. Some of you are going to struggle to, um, I, and don't take that in the negative light. Um, you put the hard work in, it'll pay, but some of you are gonna be uh, very diligent and working to improve your stature in life, whether this is professionally or in terms of marriage, achieving higher status through marriage, through a career, however it is that you aim to improve your status out in the world. A um, lot of work being put into that. But again, you put the work in, you'll get the payoff. All right, Gemini, you have Saturn in your ninth house, and uh, I've been through that. I'm in, I'm in that right now, by the way, so I can kind of speak to that, Gemini, and tell you that um, this is an energy where you're going to be tested in terms of what do you have the faith to believe in. And some of you, if you've been wanting to go travel or wanting to move a uh, long distance, um, maybe dealing with frustration and delays and getting that pulled off, and wondering, you know, what the heck is going on? Um, how do I get beyond? How do I expand my horizons? How do I get back optimism uh, in the face of all these delays and frustrations? And so um, the positive about this negative is that Saturn is really getting you to uh, get clear on what you do put, can put your confidence in. Um, what you can believe in, not just pie in the sky stuff, but because um, you know that you know that you know you can pull this off, that you can put your faith in it. It's it's faith with substance <laughs> is really, um, you know, what I'm, I'm getting out of this, okay? So just sharing that with you because I've been in that, I've been in that energy since late 2019. So good luck with that, Gemini. And Cancer, um, you guys are moving into Saturn in your eighth house. And I spoke a lot um, I, in this video about going through that transit. And um, I would say eighth house is probably uh, one of the most difficult, if not the dis most difficult house for um, Saturn to transit because it's a very, it's a very dark, you know, heavy, hidden, private, you know, it, it has to do with death, debt, taxes, sex, intimacy, other people's resources. And I'll tell you, um, it was, it was brutal for me. You know, it obviously it will manifest for different people, different ways. And I mean, I don't want to scare y'all at all because when I went through that transit, you know, I think it was harder on me than other people because I was going through a lot of midlife crisis energy, as I mentioned earlier. There were a lot of other layers of energy stacking up and compounding upon the pressure that many of you are not going through. So do not be scared, okay? But let me say that, um, you know, if you owe people money, if you have outstanding debts, it is a time where you gotta pay the piper. And if you don't have the money, Saturn doesn't care. Saturn will repossess, Saturn will foreclose, Saturn will teach you a lesson about um, how you involve other people with your money, with your resources. Saturn will require you to be more mature about those dealings, about who you merge your resources with, about who you trust, about who you bring into your private sphere it will take you to task on that. And, and, I, and I'm not gonna lie to you, it's heavy. But again, like I said earlier, if you use this energy constructively, you're gonna come out of it much stronger than you came into it. 
I came out of this Saturn in my eighth house having a way higher credit score because I worked on my credit. I did credit repair. I worked on, you know, negotiating a debt repayment and, and I actually got some unbelievably amazing deals that you would have never even convinced me like people would be that nice to me in, in you know, handling my debts. So, um, I mean, really it was like from night to day, the transformation, but again, you got to embrace it and you got to kind of get through the dark time. And I, and those of you who are ages 41 to 44 are going through this transit, which is a lot of, of the midlife crisis energy that I spoke of earlier, that just kind of compounds the difficulty of it. Um, you know, I, I'm not going to lie to you. There were times I felt like I was being buried alive. Okay. But I, if I made it through it, you can too, trust me. And if I came out of this thing shining, uh, much more financially confident, much more financially mature and fit, you can too. So stay encouraged. Leo, you have um, Saturn going through your seventh house, having to do with partnerships, long-term commitments, such as marriage, um, contracts, business contracts, okay, legal contracts. So um, you are being uh, taken to task over these next uh, two and a half years in terms of who you're partnering with, um, who you're coming into legally binding long-term agreements with. And, you know, this is a lot about kind of Libra and stuff, relationships. Um, by the way, I forgot to mention, um, Gemini, you might be dealing with karma from involving a Sagittarian, karmic lessons having to do with a Sagittarian, Cancer, you might be dealing with a um, karmic lessons having to do with a Scorpio. And Leo dealing with karmic lessons having to do, deal with a Libra. Okay, so um, Leo, back to Leo. If you have, um, if you've partnered with people who... there's some kind of lesson, pay attention to who you've partnered with. And you know, there's some kind of karmic lesson, pay attention to who you've entered into contracts and agree agreements with. Um, there's some karmic lesson at attached to this. And um, as I mentioned earlier, you know, whoever you are still partnered with by the end of a Saturn in the seventh house transit, well, that's a partnership that's gonna hold, you know, hold up and stand the test of time. It's gonna endure. Um, if it doesn't make it, it, it wasn't meant to be, you know, because Saturn in that seventh house is gonna reveal weak alliances, weak partnerships, and they won't be allowed to endure. All right, moving on to um, Virgo, Saturn in your sixth house. Hmm, very Virgo in there, sixth house. So uh, some of you dealing with your own, uh, your, your own karma or karma attached to another Virgo or just all things Virgo, like what you're doing in your daily life with your health, okay? Your daily habits and health routines. And so some of you might deal with some type of limitation or restriction on the daily. And I'm sorry to say that. Some of you might be dealing with health issues that you are having to, um, it could be emotional health, it could be physical health, it would be something that maybe needs to be looked at more closely in your natal chart, okay? Um, but you're having to deal with some kind of restriction or limitation that's maybe going on with your work, your daily work or your daily life um, at home or, you know, habits that you practice on in your, and you, you, it might be brought up to the surface that you've got to make changes with your health practices, that you need to focus on some kind of healing of yourself, or you've got to change the way you work or the way you live in some way. Um, Libra, this is fifth house, so has a lot to do with fun, children, creativity, perhaps a Leo is relevant to you or there will be some karmic lesson tied to a Leo or all things Leo. 
Um, not a fan of Saturn in the fifth house because it can put a damper on having fun. It can be a party pooper. Um, even your dating life, fifth house has a lot to do with flirtation and going out and dating. So some of you uh, dealing with maybe challenges in that respect of um, how do I deal with um, this, this uh, seriousness being brought to a house that's supposed to be about fun and pleasure. <laughs> There's some kind of challenge there, okay? And Virgo just went through that, by the way. So maybe go ask a Virgo uh, how, how they made it through. Um, finally, well, not finally, um, almost finally, Scorpio, uh, you have Saturn transiting your fourth house, which is about home, family, sense of belonging. Perhaps a Cancer is relevant to you. There might be a karmic lesson tied to um, a Cancer in your life or all things Cancerian, which can represent the mother. Um, home and family, nurturing, emotional uh, mastery, okay? So um, what I'm seeing for you is that there might be some restriction. Um, my daughter recently went through a Saturn and fourth uh, house placement. Um, you might feel cut off in some respect from uh, your family or your sense of um, belonging to people. Okay, that could really be challenged. Um, I remember when Saturn first transited uh, my oldest daughter's um, fourth house, we moved away. We, um, we moved quite a distance, uh, basically put five hours uh, between myself and her. Um, and along with me came her two other sisters. So. And then, you know, she was far, like living three hours away from any other family member. So there was basically three to five hours put between uh, herself and the other family members. This, this can manifest in different ways. It might be actual physical distance. It might be emotional distance. Uh, it will be different people in different ways. I mean, you can be living under the same roof with these people, but you feel in some way you don't belong or um, that there's a lack of nurturing. Um, so in some way, you're going to be taken to task and challenge, like how do you create a sense of belonging apart from the things that you are familiar with, that you find nurture you in some way? And then finally, Sagittarius, we've got Saturn transiting your third house. Um, so perhaps a Gemini is relevant to you or there's some kind of karma attached to a Gemini. And third house has a lot to do with siblings and uh, your local community, uh, short distance travel, you know, your neighborhood, um, even people that you kind of deal with uh, rather frequently, okay? But it's also about truth and communications. And so um, there might be challenges in terms of you uh, communicating yourself to those people, siblings in the family, communication problems, uh, communication problems with people um, in your locale, wherever you reside. And um, some of you, it might be uh, having to do with learning, you know, higher, higher learning. Um, although higher learning is more associated with ninth house, which is very Sagittarian, okay? Um, even though I'm, but it's learning still in the third house is I guess what I'm saying. So it doesn't have to necessarily be um, like long distance learning, online learning, it might. Uh, it doesn't have to be um, necessarily going to a college or a university, um, but it could simply be, you know, some kind of informal learning, um, self-taught, you know, or simply, attending local workshops, um, recertification programs, things like that. It, it could take on a number of manifestations for different people. Again, looking at the chart as a whole really helps. And so let me end on that note, just to remind those of you who have made it to the end, um, that you know if you want something that is m most accurate and unique to your natal chart, which is as unique as a fingerprint, 
no two people have the same natal chart, not even twins, because we get right down to your exact minute of birth location, right? Then, you know, um, if you want help with that, let me know. I am doing uh, annual readings for those of you who are interested where we will look specifically at all the energies and where they exactly place um, given your unique natal chart and I pull cards as well. So if you're interested in that, come over to my website at uh, crownones.weebly.com, look at my contact page and um, get you set up for uh, a reading. All right, I hope y'all enjoyed this and until next time, I'm wishing you guys all the best as always. Be blessed.